Well, love it. Welcome back to the shop. Today we jump into a new project where we're going to be doing basically a full restoration of uh, my 2018 300 dirt bike. This will be uh, uh, a continuing series. It's probably going to take about four weeks uh, to, to get all the parts and everything in. And there's a lot of things that we can do in the meantime. And if you've always wanted a dirt bike, but looked, couldn't you know, really justify the cost of a new one. I'm telling you, those old dirt bikes, those old two strokes, the 250s and such, are so affordable. And even if you don't have a mechanical background or you don't consider yourself a mechanic, you can work on these. They're so simple, so simple. And so it's such a, a wonderful hobby. So a lot of the things that I'm going to be doing on this will translate and uh, you can do it. You can do it. You can go out there and buy something for a thousand bucks and get it in your shop and have something you're really proud of. So one thing that works for me, is uh, it's easy to get overwhelmed when you tear into it. Obviously, as it, it's in its curtain state, it looks pretty bad, but you just break it down by systems, braking system, uh, cooling system, etc. And then it's actually quite simple. So today we're gonna be, as we're waiting for parts, we're gonna get started on the cooling system. Let me show you the damage that has been done, and then we'll see if we can't uh, get that all uh, sorted out. This bike, of course, is water-cooled. We've got the, the radiators up front. Uh, the cooling system consists of the radiators, fan, and the water pump. You can see uh, some of the fins are damaged, and actually the ends are smashed in here from impacts. Now, it's not leaking, so I'm not gonna, not gonna worry about new ones, but I think we can get this straightened out. So let's pull everything apart and see if we can't make these look a lot better. We'll start by draining the coolant. Whenever you drain coolant on anything, always remove the cap. A coolant system is pressurized reason why it's pressurized is that it raises the boiling temperature if you keep it under pressure, how I understand it. This is the water pump here, which will have a little impeller in there. Whoops, go, go get my, of course we have to spill my pan here. Little impeller in there that when the engine's running, a gear drives it and circulates the water. Oh goodness, a lot of pressure there. Essential tool. In your shop is one of these magnetic parts holders. They're handier than a pocket in a shirt, as my granddad used to say. Next, we'll remove the fan. Now, the fan is, is aftermarket. The bike doesn't come with this. This is an essential, especially if you do real hard enduro stuff, an essential piece of equipment because it comes on with a thermostat and really helps keep the bikes cool, especially when you're low speed and not moving. Now, the fan, it's kind of interesting here, these little copper probes. These are designed to slide in between the fins on the radiator. You see I have two of them in here. And what this does is th this gives you the, the I guess, little computer in there, the temperature of the, the bike, and then it knows when to turn the fan off and on automatically, thermostatically controlled. You can see that right here you can program that. There's even a second one in here, and the second one uh, is goes up to the gauges. Now this is not ideal. This is a, a quick quick and dirty fix uh, to get temperature of your bike. The better way to do it, and what we'll be changing over to, is an inline probe. Now this has the same plug as we're going to have, you can see right here, that goes up to the gauges. It's just a much better way. Guys don't often put these in because it's just more of a hassle. You could quickly stick one of those copper things in there. And I've always never been really happy with it because you don't get a very accurate reading. Now with this, you see there's a probe in there. You're going to get real exact temperature of your, of your bike. So we'll, uh, we'll upgrade that. Next, we'll take off the three radiator hoses, the cooling hoses. These are also aftermarket. These are actually handmade in England, silicone radiator hoses by Samco, and they're the finest hoses you can buy. The hoses that are going to come on your factory bike are not very high quality, and they're okay for a year or two, but then they get soft and not something you would ever want to trust on a bike that you want to build for reliability. So this is a, a good upgrade, not to mention that this bike and a lot of the KTMs come with a very convoluted, complicated thermostat. Uh, which re really restricts the flow, in my opinion. And, and you can, with Samco, they offer a kit to bypass all that. So you get all that junk off of there and just make it clean and let the water flow easily. These will last a long, long time. They're only, I put them on maybe two years ago. So not something I'm going to need to replace. This tool, if you have to remove radiator hoses, is very handy. And 
what you want to do is you want to get in there and break that connection. You know, it gets, be careful, don't poke a hole, you can ruin them, but you break that connection where it kind of binds to the aluminum and it makes it a lot easier to get off. Hit that thumbs up, beloved. Working hard for you here to make good content. Good t content's rare and hard to find. You want to reward folks that put the stuff out you like. Okay, I think we're ready. Do yourself a favor and buy this tool. Motion Pro, part number 080389. It's a T-handle quarter inch drive and then put a 6, 8, and 10 millimeter socket on it. This will do 95% of the bolts on your bike in one tool. You always have it on hand. Now this radiator is damaged. Can you see where it's damaged? It's not super obvious. Right there. It's crushed in a little bit. Something that's absolutely essential. Uh, one of the first things you should do if you have a cool... Uh, water-cooled bike is radiator guards. These in my opinion are the best you can buy. These are made by Bulletproof and they are uh, very well designed in that they fit on the factory nuts right there and they offer crush protection. When you drop a bike and even somehow, even with these guards on it, something must have got beyond it, maybe hit it right in here and that's dented in. You can see the fins are crushed. Now it's never leaked. I've never had a problem with it. Maybe we'll I don't know if we should let sleeping dogs lie there, but maybe we can see if we can straighten that out a little bit. But the guards, how they mount, very simple. Factory nuts, it clips over and then it offers this impact. Now you've got that side impact protection. If you drop this, now it's transferring all of that energy over to the frame and protecting that very vulnerable radiator. You can see how fragile those could be. These are very well made. This is an essential upgrade right here for sure. If we put our straight edge on here, we can see how much that got pushed in right there. You can even see the fins are crushed a little bit. I replaced all of the original hoses with those three blue Samco hoses, except for this piece right here. This is a special T that goes up. It takes a special tool to unscrew this, and this is still the original one. I've got the new Samco version ordered. It should be here in a couple days, and, but end tool. So we'll do that when that shows up, and we'll pull this out and put that new hand laid silicone in there uh, and get rid of the, the old factory one. I think this is everything. Now, we're going to straighten these radiator fins. I noticed one of these on the inside is pretty chewed up there. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to clean this stuff up. Now, I've got the... I used to detail cars. It was one of my side hustles when I was in high school. And back before aluminum was treated, I, I found this stuff called Wheel Bright. I think it's basically a muriatic acid. But man, it does the trick on aluminum and I've got a bunch of buffing wheels. So we're gonna really do things up. This is gonna be the nicest 2018 TE in the state. I've got a bucket of hot piping water here with Dawn soap, and we'll put it all in there, get that stuff soaking. I was wondering if there's gonna be a problem getting soap inside the radiators. I thought, yeah, should I tape those things up? But to be honest with you, I'll just flush them with fresh water. Dawn, you know, it's cut by water. I don't think it'd be a problem. If it does, I'll let you know. Get all these guys soak it in here and start brushing a little bit. All right, let's go get our wheel bright and we'll get that staining taken care of.
This stuff is pretty caustic. It always smells like muriatic acid. Muriatic acid is used, or we used to use it uh, for masonry, for cleaning concrete off of stuff. But it really is a, in its straight form, it's a little bit much for aluminum. It'll etch it if you don't, you don't, you don't want to leave it on too long, about 30 seconds or so. Let's see how it does on this stained aluminum. Aluminum, especially raw, if you don't keep it clean and let dirt sit on it, it will stain like this. And this was kind of a hard to get to area. But make sure you don't leave it on too long and you, you neutralize it with water. So, you know, 30, 30 seconds or so, put it on there. We'll do a little sample. If you're gonna do something like some nice wheels, make sure that, you know, you understand from the manufacturer, you know, the newer ones, you don't wanna use this on but test it in a small area on the back and make sure it's not going to discolor or be unsightly for you. Yeah, it looks like it's lightened up already. You probably have to, well, probably have to brush it. We have to, might even have to get a brass brush, but we'll, we'll coat this real good. Here's the one we just finished up, and here's the one before, just soap and water. These weren't too bad, but you can really tell on that staining. That's, that's not dirt. You know, I've washed that, scrubbed that real good with a stiff brush. That's stained in the aluminum, and that wheel bright takes that right off. Cleaned up quite a, quite a bit brighter inside the fins as well. You can especially see on the outside. That's going to cool better as well, but that stuff's really good. It uh, it really does the work for you. All right, let me go clean this one, and then we'll uh, go about straightening, setting these fins right. Special delivery, gentlemen, just came in. This is my suspension box, and I originally had my suspension done by Kreft in Oregon, and they unfortunately uh, shut shut down their shop. And so uh, when I went on their website, they recommended a couple local guys, and I. Got, it was, uh, I met Scott, or I didn't meet him, I talked to him on the phone, Scott at 113 Suspension in Redmond, Oregon. He's picking up, you know, I guess doing their warranty work and such, or just kind of picking up where they left off. He's familiar with the product. So I called him, and really good dude. I talked to him on the phone, and he sent me this box out, and I'm going to box up my shocks and my sus uh, fork uh, for him to do some custom work on. Now, I'm just going to have a rebuild done, but while I'm at it, I'm going to have it Kashima coated. Now Kashima coated and then a DLC, a diamond like coating DLC, I think they call it, is a, a really sp special, they're not even coatings, they, they like change the material of the shock to make them much slipperier. It's what you see on a lot of race bikes and the best money I ever spent on moto was suspension. Suspension, having the suspension tuned to me and, and done uh, took all the scary away. It made the bike much safer. It made it much more predictable and much more enjoyable. So, especially for older riders, if you're older and you know you're having joint problems and such, you know life is too short to be bouncing around on factory suspension. You know it's it's is it's just not very good. You don't know what you're missing until you do it. If you're going to put money into a motorcycle, you know do it where it really matters. Do it into the in the suspension. Uh, let me show you what a Kashima coating looks like. I have a little bit on my rear shock. I had the forks revalved and resprung for my weight a couple years ago by Kreft, but I didn't have the, the coatings done. I'm going to do it this time. So I'll send this to Scott and then he'll take this apart and then that, the Kashima gold color will be on the upper part of the forks. And then the back down here, we'll treat this, the DLC, with that black, that diamond-like coating. And then I'm going to have them Cerakote uh, these bottom the, the clamp parts or whatever you call these things. So these are going to look really nice. And what that does is it just makes everything very slippery and it moves a lot better. Apparently it's really, really noticeable. I, I've read a lot about it. Again, I'm not the suspension expert. I leave it to guys like Scott that know how to do these things. But I do know from going from factory KTM or Husky suspension to just the revalving and respringing was, it was a miracle for me. I felt like it, it, it it took my riding up up ten notches, um, so I'm I'm a big proponent of it. So let's get these. Well, um, let me finish up the aluminum, and then we'll box these up, and then get these out tomorrow uh, to Scott.
Fan cleaned up nice. Got the hoses all cleaned up. These are silicone, so they no dirt really sticks to them. And then the only thing left is our clamps. I'll give those a quick brushing. They're stainless, so they shouldn't be too bad. All right, gentlemen, got everything cleaned up. Looks a whole lot better. Our hoses, clamps, everything. So next I'm gonna polish, uh, we'll start polishing. I just, I messed around here a little bit just to give you an idea. I, I'm not looking to make a showpiece. I just like things, uh, I don't care if they look used, as long as they're in good condition. Let's yank that shock out. We gotta get that in the mail today, and then we, I can show you uh, how, what tools I use for polishing and, and uh, dealing with this aluminum. All right, gentlemen, we will get this all packaged up here and shipped out to Scott. I'll throw up a photo here of, he sent me, of what, what it's going to look like. It'll look quite a bit different when they come back. Four weeks, I think, four to five weeks, I think is what he said. Hard to believe they're going to Japan. This is the Kishima coating right there. I think I... I forgot to point that out to you. Okay. Send this out to the UPS man. Well, gentlemen, that's it for today. If you'd like to pick up and follow along a part two, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate you watching my videos. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you on the next video.